waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon a skip off a calf, and Mount Hermon like a wild young ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees die and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. Glory, glory to, to the, the Father, Father and to the Son, and Son, and Spirit. Because it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson will be read by Cheryl Bain. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle this morning is a new one. Uh, well, one we haven't sung for a while. And Charlie Martin will be singing it. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the people. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land. Ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light. 
and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Thank you, Charlie. The next lesson is read by Terry Roper. A reading from Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. This is from our psalm. The Lord shall give strength to God's people. The Lord shall give God's people a blessing of peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So I imagine that we have all added more to the list of things and events we never thought we would see, then perhaps our pages have room for. I guess I might as well include that I never thought I'd add preparing for church includes having multiple dog toys with treats lined up that I can surreptitiously fling to somebody during worship. That will end someday. We've added more things uh, to that list than our pages might have room for, but what about our hearts? What I do know is this, in God, our hearts are vast and beautiful and beloved and can hold all things when we stick to the God we love and know and see. This has been, uh, this has been a hard, a burdensome and alarming a frightening week. Not only did three strangers from an obscure Eastern religion, probably Zoroastrianism, uh, show up to a young family with a brand new baby somewhere in the Holy Land, and they uh, brought wealth and Greetings and homage and rumors and knowledge of a plot to kill that child. And we remember that 2,000 years later, more than 2,000 years later, that's the epiphany, if that story didn't make sense to you. That story which shows us that love embodied in an infant 
God become human, that goodness and truth and the glory of grace and mercy are our strength, and that those are found in weakness, human frailty, the binds and ties of love. So not only did that happen on Wednesday, but also on Wednesday, the events at our nation's capital, our house of government, uh, were terrible. And those, I have no doubt, will be remembered for years to come. Centuries, maybe. The violence and disrespect for our government process and principles, the breaching, actual breaching of the Capitol, the threat to lawmakers, physical threat to lawmakers and staff, the loss of five lives and more. It is a blight and a sorrow and we must grieve and we will. And yet in the midst of that, I am also mindful that the foundations remain democracy, this experiment, 250 something years old, about how to be a nation in a big world that we hardly understand, it continues. We are shaken, no doubt, but only hours after that violence, which was broadcast to the entire world, only hours after that, our government returned to the chambers of the House and Senate. They did their work. And in the midst of that, I was moved. I hope you saw this. I was moved so deeply by uh, a second, second term representative from New Jersey, Andy Kim, who picked up a trash bag, and started picking up trash in the hallway. He set about writing a mess, both by fulfilling his political duties and picking up a trash bag. And so on this Sunday, January 10th, that was just four days ago, we return to our foundations. First, how we see and know the universe. That's in the lesson from Genesis. In the beginning, in the beginning, there was no order. God swept over the water. There was light and darkness. They were made distinct, but not set against each other. There was goodness in the ordering of things, not only in the light. It is a reminder to us that there was and is chaos. And that God reaches and speaks to us through that, through us, by us, with us, for us. Through human humility is God glorified. Again and again, we have seen that in the life of scripture, in the word and story of scripture, and in the glory of the church. So this Sunday is called the first Sunday after the Epiphany. It's the Sunday of our most time-traveled week, which seems a little less quaint in Zoom time than it does in ordinary time. And by the way, if you caught a typo in the uh, song of praise, I think I put COVID-91 instead of COVID-19, don't be alarmed. That's a typo, not a new variety. Jesus was an infant on Wednesday, and now he's 30 years old by all reckonings. He's 30 years old. He goes to his brother, John the Baptist, who's three months older, six months older than he is. John has been baptizing with repentance. Turn, turn away from sin. We know sin is so real and unavoidable. None of us is free of it. Jesus goes to the River Jordan, and I know in, my, in some of my wanderings, I imagine that the Jordan River is big and clear and sparkly and so on. What I hear from those who have visited the Holy Land is that now it's kind of muddy and forlorn. It used to be bigger. Human intervention has caused other things. But it was just a river. 
Jesus goes to his cousin John, who is a prophet, and receives baptism. Baptism as solidarity. Baptism as being proclaimed beloved. I'm going to pause for a second to try to get some of the noise. That might be better. Jesus was baptized to demonstrate that he is fully with us in every possible way. And it is for us always on this first Sunday after the Epiphany, a return to our foundations. What does it mean to follow Jesus? How do we do that? If we were in church and we will be back someday, if we had a family that had brought a child for baptism or, or an adult that had come for baptism, we would say the promises again of our baptismal covenant. How do we follow Jesus through the chaos? There's a wonderful hymn, I think it's in the 600s. Jesus calls us over the tumult of life's wild and restless sea. If that doesn't describe this week, I don't know what does. But our way forward is pe as people is to remember first and foremost that we follow a God whose power is known in weakness. And it begins with repentance. It can, begins with turning away those things that take us away from God. It begins with setting about once again to clean up the mess that is before us. When Representative Andy Kim, second generation American immigrant, did that, it wasn't his mess. He didn't make it. Can't imagine he wanted it. And yet he started cleaning it up. You might feel that way about this week or this world, and it's just as true for us as followers of Jesus. Let us do our part. And so I simply want to end by reminding you, by reminding you of what those promises are in our baptismal covenant. You know, usually when we do this and we're in the church, I ask you to, um, I took away the spotlight. I ask you to put away your prayer books because you know the answer, right? The answer is, I will with God's help. And to, instead of staring at our books, to look at each other. Well, what a gift we have in Zoom, right? So I want to invite you to renew your promises of baptism. The answer to every question, there's only five of them that I'm about to ask, is I will, with God's help. How do we change the world? This way. How do we change our country? This way. How do we change and look onward and upward into greater and deeper light this way. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. And will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. God be with you, and God be with us. Amen. If you are uh, planning on attending the class that begins at noon today from noon to one taught by Father Dan Edwards. Um, 
you will need, to, if you haven't registered, so one of the differences between regular old church and this is you can't just decide, oh, I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee and then saunter over into that meeting room and show up for class um, because there's this password that is uh, there that you'll need to get into that Zoom room. So here's what you need to do. If you haven't registered, either uh, write this down, maybe someone will put it into the chat, um, or you can email me between now and noon and I will send it to you. This is a seven week class. Uh, I can't imagine anything uh, more helpful for us to get called back to in our foundations uh, than to listen to some of the teachings of Father Dan right now. Um, he'll be talking, I think today about prudence, uh, teaching for 30 minutes, 30 minutes of discussion in smaller breakout rooms. Um, uh, next weekend is, uh, next Monday, a week from Monday, is Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Usually, I'd be deep, deep, deep in planning with our partners at the university for a remembrance. Uh, we are not doing that this year, and we're not doing that online. What I want to ask you to do is um, do something, something that takes you out of yourself and your experience, something that uh, gets you to learn. Uh, some of those things will happen before next Sunday, so I will put a couple that I know of in the weekly email. Uh, there's one in particular that is very local. It's about uh, Black experiences in Boulder. Um, I think that's an, uh, one that's really uh, powerful. Uh, I know the Dairy Arts Center is doing something with Modus Theater, and uh, there are some other events do something, observe in some way. If you don't wanna do anything online, which I absolutely understand, download the letter from Birmingham Jail. Just grab yourself a cup of tea and read that. It's beautiful, it's holy, and it uh, is worth all of us reading. Sarah Soki has put the meeting ID uh, in the chat for Father Dan's class. So now we're gonna give you a poll. There are six questions to this. Kim is gonna get that queued up. Um, if uh, you'll see why we're asking these questions, the other reason is our annual meeting is no doubt going to be online. So we're gonna get some practice doing polls. So um, if, you're if you're using an iPad or a phone, I especially wanna know if this works for you. You'll have to tell me later. Um, Kim, can you go ahead and get that first question queued up? Here we go. These are questions about our faith boxes. So um, uh, I'm not quite sure. Kim, do they drive the time or do we just decide? I have no idea. OK, so you were all learning, which is awesome. Uh, so you can click as many as you would like. And I think. Um, let's see, I'm seeing the whole, well, I'm seeing results. Um, you, I hope, are seeing the poll on your screen, but I'm not seeing that anyone's voting yet. Um, so the first question is, what part of the faith boxes and our offerings during Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany were most helpful in growing your faith? Um, so if you can vote, please do. Is anyone seeing this and able to vote? Huh. I wonder if you have to submit at the very end. Okay, Sarah Soki is uh, teaching by Zoom regularly. So, okay. So it looks like you have to submit at the end. So I think you get to lead yourself through all six questions. Okay. Uh, okay, now I'm seeing some votes happening. Okay, so um, we're asking, this is anonymous too, by the way. So um, I'm not gonna track you down if you didn't like something in the faith box and have an argument with you. I don't have time for that. You don't have time for that. And plus we need the feedback. Um, so what was helpful for you in our faith boxes? And then the second question is what was least helpful or least used by your household? Um, let's see, um, given that it's question three starts asking about the future, 
we're going to be online for the foreseeable future. Um, we, we are considering doing faith boxes again for Ash Wednesday, Lent, Holy Week, and Easter Tide. Uh, Easter is 15 weeks away. Um, that makes me nervous, but we'll get there. God always, or God always rises. Um, what would be what would be most helpful to you for those? Good. Oh, whoops! I see that you're voting. Thank you. And then uh, another question, question four is about the kinds of offerings that we might do. Um, there's a question about what are you missing the most? Looks like pretty much everything. Good, me too. I miss you. I didn't put on their hugs because I think in a church context, that's probably not appropriate, but I am missing that, I'll tell you. And then there's a question about faith boxes. Our biggest investment for Advent, Christmas, and Epiphany were the guidebooks for children and grown-ups. Um, I really love the images and the stories told. All right, did it just end? Huh? Did we do that, or did the poll do that all by itself? Poll it did by itself. We, we can work on this. Okay. There's a way to make it show one question at a time and all that. And also co-host can't vote. So got it. To submit oh, that's the later. And I give you my apologies. I forgot I was a co-host and I ended the poll. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we can relaunch it. I'm sorry. Oh, wait, I, no, I, it clears I, results. Never mind. Yeah, okay. Maybe we'll launch, maybe we'll do the same thing next Sunday. Just practice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sunday. <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, thank you all for putting up with this highly technical process during church and for letting us do our prayers that way. If you're visiting, um, thank you for sticking around. Let's go ahead and stop the poll and we will probably uh, uh, use it in a more refined form next week. Um, it'll be shorter and let us uh, continue um, with the offertory. But first you can unmute yourselves. And may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace everybody. Peace everybody. Edgar, are you here both in voice and picture? Everyone. Peace everyone. Yes, everybody. Everybody. Peace. Peace. Molly, hi, Molly. Peace, Candace. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. Hi, Marty. Hi, Marty. Hi, Marty. Hi, Marty. Hi, Marty. Hi, Johanna. Mother Mary Kate, I don't think people had enough time to do it. I could barely scroll and answer fast enough. Hi, Jim. Hi. I think you have to wait a moment hey, Chris. to give people some, yeah. Hey, Jim, maybe we could relaunch the poll at the end. You have to do six separate polls if you want to pull the questions up individually. Got it. Okay. I think well, we should just do it next week. Okay, let's do it next week. <laughs> yes, next week is good. Thanks for putting up with me, everybody. <laughs> We're all learning. <laughs> yeah, and if you were, if your device didn't let you do the poll, even if you couldn't answer all the questions, shoot, shoot me an email and let me know what kind of device you were using. That'd be great. Okay. All right, so we're going to enjoy an offertory played by Wes, and then we'll continue with our prayers. Hello. Hi, Bronwyn. Hi.
Let us continue with the Apostles' Creed altogether. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>